Hey guys, so I'm here with my uh, El Grey tea, and I just wanted to comment on a kind of conspiracy theory for the new Star Trek Picard series, and I actually think this one is incredibly plausible, so I was going to cover that today, and it's going to be a long one, but stay tuned because it's going to be pretty awesome. So, the new Star Trek Picard series looks amazing. It really does, honestly. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Star Trek Discovery. Um, I kind of thought it moved um, too far away from the original Star Trek, to be honest. And it was a good series, don't get me wrong, but it didn't feel like classic. Um, it didn't feel like classic Star Trek to me. So we see the return of some very loved Star Trek characters in Star Trek Picard. Picard will be joined by Riker, Deanna Troy, Seven of Nine, as well as possibly Q, and a few other um, new cast members. Yet yeah, you may have noticed, in the latest Picard trailer, we see a young woman coming to Picard for help. Do you know who I am? Everything inside me says I'm safe with you, she says. So, some of the fans have been theorising that perhaps she could actually be Lull. Yeah, Data's daughter, created in the Next Generation episode The Offspring. Episode 16, Season 3, if you want to go and watch it. Lull was a Sun-type android constructed by Data based on his own positronic brain. Lull chose her own sex and appearance, which was incredibly progressive, and Data chose the name for her because the word Lull in Hindi means beloved. There's a bit of Trek trivia for you. <laughs> the episode is really good, and it's worth another watch. It's pers personally one of my um, favourite episodes. Unfortunately, Lull developed a systemic fault with her positronic brain, and Data tries really hard to fix it. But unfortunately, Data isn't able to fix it, so she unfortunately dies. I say dies, she um, stops functioning. So was that the end of Lull? Well, no. As a final act following her death, Data transferred Lull's memories and experiences into his own brain, ensuring a part of her would live on. Data, who created Lull, also retained the information about her construction and hypothetically how to construct another um, android similar. So how on earth would the woman in the Picard trailer um, turn out to be Lull if she died? Well now we need to look at the movie Star Trek First Contact. That's a movie where the Borg attack Earth. In that movie, a sphere travels back in time to prevent Earth's first contact with Vulcans. Um, the Enterprise follows the ship back in time and blows up the Borg sphere. Now, in the explosion of the Borg ship, it looks like large chunks of the ship actually survive. And in fact, we know canonically they do. It also seems that some drones survive as well. At least two drones will survive the explosion. Most of the Borg transports to the Enterprise and data is assimilated. The Borg copy data's memories, but they can't decrypt um, the lockout codes that the Borg need to um, take control of the Enterprise. So, in the movie, the Borg are trying to send a message to the Delta Quadrant. The audience assumes the Borg wants a signal for reinforcements, but what if they actually want something else? They've already assimilated data, and they've actually gained knowledge of Lull's schematics, and how you can actually build another version of a similar android, or indeed the same android. Data has proven to be physically stronger than the Borg in conflicts. He's incredibly intelligent. Data constructs Lull to be able... One of the problems with the Borg is they don't really have much of an anim... They don't really have much of an imagination. So, as a result, if they want new information, they have to assimilate it from other species. Having artificial intelligence like Data would actually enable the Borg to innovate in a way that they previous in a way that they can't at the moment. When Data constructs Lull, he also builds Lull so that she's actually superior to Data in many ways. For example, her positronic brain can calculate 60 trillion calculations per second, which is more than Data. So these androids seem to be self-improving. Now interestingly, if you think about the concept of an intelligence explosion, that could be where um, an intelligence would continuously improve itself very, very quickly. Could data be a sort of very, very slow, primitive version of this? If um, these androids were, 
if these androids continue to improve themselves, could they potentially become super intelligences that the Borg can actually use as sort of almost research drones? So the Borg have to assimilate new life. They may be able to grow new Borg in maturation chambers, but these new Borg can take months or years to grow, and they won't actually supply the Borg Collective with any new information or any new technology. So near the end of the movie, after Picard has given the order to abandon ship, Picard sends his data, almost like data's become part of the Collective. Data could have easily given the Borg access to most of his memories in order to gain their trust, which is what Picard may have experienced. Being nominally collected to the Borg Collective, Picard actually has the ability to sense kind of what's going on with the Borg. Now later in the movie, when the Queen is destroyed, the crew retake the ship and return home. Now this is where we pick up with um, a Star Trek Enterprise episode called Regeneration. Now it's season two, episode 23, if you want to check it out. And it's not my favorite episode to be honest, but it's quite good. So a scientific team in the Arctic discovered two mysterious cyborgs, similar to those descended from, described by Zephyrin Cochrane. When they assimilate the scientists and move into space, Enterprise is called to find the cybernetic beings and stop them. So clearly the drones are left over from Star Trek First Contact and actually follow the same mission objective as the Borg in the movie, suggesting they were connected to the Collective before the Queen died. These Borg would also carry Data's memories, including the information about Lull. Lull. Ah. Uh, in a nutshell, the Borg steal a ship, assimilate others, Two of the Borg get blasted into space by Captain Archer, through an airlock, and the Borg manage to send a signal to the Borg homeworld in the Delta Quadrant with instructions on how to find Earth using pulsar locations. Now, the Borg may have hypothetically sent the schematics for Data and Lull back to Earth too. We don't know. The episode doesn't really say, um, but it suggests that they may not have done this. But nevertheless, the Borg blasted into space would have still retained the information about Data and Lull. I mean, if this was high priority information, then every single Borg drone would have actually knew about it. So it's entirely possible that Borg drones blasted into space from Archer's ship were picked up hundreds of years later by the Borg, and the information that they would have contained would have been assimilated by the Collective. How awesome would it be if this was actually the storyline? It would follow three different TV series and one movie. Of course, this is just a theory, but it's been a lot of fun working it out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think this is a possible? Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think that this is at all possible? Okay, thank you very much for watching. And I've been David Beck, and this has been Marley. And thank you very much. Um, please subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I will try to get more content to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Being nominally collected. Being nominally. Oh, oh my goodness. Being nominally, being nominally connected to the collective himself, the Borg is 